Well, all right, so I was scrolling through Bleacher Report and I came across an article about Jeff Hardy returning to Raw, to uh, SmackDown this week. And I guess this is kind of an obscure video, but most of my videos nowadays just are, are me going through Bleacher Report, looking at stories and thinking of what can I talk about. And I, and I kind of wanted to talk about this, but when Jeff Hardy returned a few years ago, I mean, it was a good moment, but I brought up the fact that this guy is older, you know, he's definitely not in his prime anymore. But also, this guy has had a consistent history of drinking and drug problems over the last 10 to 15 years. So there's a big risk in bringing somebody into your company who has consistently, you know, gotten in trouble for this shit. Um, of course, he had the famous incident at uh, with, with TNA there where he came to a match. I think their big pay-per-view match he came to and he was fucking, you know, under the influence of something. Which was a big embarrassment. I mean, that right there might as well just disqualify you from ever working a wrestling match again, right? You, you would figure, but no. Um, so then he gets in trouble for public intoxication um, while in Myrtle Beach. I think it was a while back, like a year ago. Which... To get charged with public intoxication, you probably got to be pretty fucking hammered. And you figure as a WWE superstar, you wouldn't let yourself get get like that in public, right? You know, like, it's 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 different if you're fucking, like, you know, Joe Schmo, you know, and, and you're not a public figure, you know, you have a couple drinks, that's fine, whatever. But if you're a public figure, you're representing WWE, you shouldn't be drunk as fuck out on the streets, right? Then he gets arrested for driving under the influence of, I believe, alcohol. It's either alcohol or some drug. So this guy has gotten in trouble not only over the past 10 to 15 years, but two times in 2019. But yet they bring him back. That's how desperate they are to bring back people with some name recognition. I mean, this guy isn't even that big of a draw. Yeah, he was a, you know, a decent name over the last 10 to 15 years. It's not like he's like a rock or an Austin though but yet they bring him back because once again they are desperate and they have no no big names in their company right now no nobody who can draw a shit besides people who are over the age of 40 or 50 and are 20 years past their prime so they're willing to bring back a fucking drunk a guy who's gotten in trouble with the law time after time you know, most public figures, you know, or, or even anybody, if, you know, you go to your, go, go for a job interview and like, yeah, I've been, I've been fucking arrested, you know, uh, I, I just got arrested for driving under the influence. You know, they run their, your background check and they find out, you know, you're applying for a big time position, right? And, and they figure out you, you just got arrested for driving under the influence and then public intoxication a few months before that. You know, you did Vicodin, you did this, you did that. They'd be like, oh, fuck no. Rejected. Right, around, right away. But not in WWE because they're, they're you know, they're, they're fucking desperate for fucking. That's how, that's how desperate they are. They're willing to hire fucking people who should probably be in rehab. Fucking sad. You know, the state of this company. So I just wanted to talk about that because it really pissed me the fuck off. And it, I don't know, it was just something that really bothered me. Just like a lot of things in this company bother me. So, so there you go, people.